If you're a foodie, have we got a deal for you. I'm joined by Tracy Snow from the city of Kingston, and you're running a seminar for people who want to get into food services. And making food. And making food. Making food to sell to our local retailers, local restaurants, creating opportunities to sell local food and work with local farms and local foodies to make that happen. Yes. Well, you can see a whole, because they got to get the food from somewhere, and why not the local farmers, and then put it together, and then sell, oh my gosh, this is, touches a lot of, uh, a lot of people. It's a great synergy between our local agricultural community and our local restaurants and people, uh, local businesses that are looking to buy and sell local food, not only to our community and our residents, but also to tourists. So we've been looking for opportunities to, how do we teach people about making local food? There are a lot of regulations, a lot of policies in place at varying levels. So the federal government, Canadian Federal Inspection Agency has to get involved when making and selling local food. The uh, OMAFRA, so the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture cultural farm and rural affairs mm -hmm. need to be involved with helping with make local food and of course Kingston um, F KFLNA Public Health really involved as well in terms of making local food. A little bit of complications, there's a lot to navigate, what does that look like, what are the policies, what do the labels have to look like, how do I put the products on, the, on whatever it is, whether it's a jar of tomato sauce or baked goods or brownies or even frozen goods that we can be selling back to our local retailers and to our restaurants who want to sell local food. So we are uh, offering a full day on February 10th, Friday, February 10th at the Kingston East Community Centre where we're going to be talking about making and selling local food. We're bringing all of those partners in, so all of those regulation partners to talk about what are the rules and the regulations and the policies on making local food. We at the City of Kingston actually have three commercial kitchens. Now we have multiple commercial kitchens, but we have three municipally run com commercial kitchens that we're going to talk about. How do you book them? How do you actually make food at a local commercial kitchen? How much will it cost you to use that? Because you've got to work that into your plan as well. You do. So you have to look at the cost, just you know, buying the product itself to make, whether it's jars or boxes or bags in terms of that retail sales piece or that restaurant sales piece. But yeah, booking the time. How much time do you need to make the food? How many customers do you have that you're going to sell the food to which will then determine how much time you need to be baking. So these commercial kitchens uh, will be able to offer booking times and how much it is. The other piece that's really great is we're partnering with South Frontenac Township on this mm. and they also have many commercial kitchens. They're going to be designated one specifically in their region that's municipally run as well and so we're really opening up the door regionally to talk about making food locally, supporting our local farmers, our local foodies, our local businesses and our restaurants to then bring more local food to the region. But they could use other commercial kitchens. They uh, can. Because I, I'm thinking um, Shriners, various churches, they're always looking for money. So That's um, correct. Yeah, and yeah. they don't use their kitchens all the time. So, so as long as the kitchen is certified by the public health, the KFLA public health, and it's certified as a commercial kitchen so that so there are many kitchens that you can make food in and maybe sell, but there are many kitchens that you have to be careful that you can make food and sell to a retailer, for example. Oh. So that, and that's where this day is really going to help. It's going to teach see. people about the difference bes uh, between, say, cooking in a local church or cooking in a commercial kitchen that's been designated by the province and by the, uh, the public health department to make it happen. So we're going to teach people about all that. We're also going to talk about what does it look like as a business and yeah. what does it look like to market it? How do you get your customers? Who are your customers? Customers. and it depends on what you're what you're making so mm -hmm. there's going to be a full day from 9 to 4 we're including lunch it only costs ten dollars there's free parking bus transportation to the site and we're just really excited about hopefully creating a new opportunities to making local food and there's room for 40 participants that's great and you know what it makes what I get excited about is we're getting a larger ethnic community here I would love to see more ethnic food and yeah. The ingredients, that's terrific, but I don't know what most of them are, and I'm not that great a cook, to be honest with you, so I would love to be able to buy some of these ethnic foods already done, ready to pop in the oven. and Yes, yeah, and we're hoping for that as well, and we have one of the kitchens that we're actually working with is the Portsmouth Olympic Harbor, so the Harbor Community Kitchen, and Keys has been working actually really closely with that kitchen to support female entrepreneurs in terms of making food from all over the place. Um, so yes, and the other great thing about making local food is you don't necessarily have to sell it to a retailer or a restaurant. You can actually make local food, and if you have the correct storing uh, capabilities within your 
your home or at a storage facility that's actually permitted by the public health department, you can actually make local food and sell it online. So there's oh, many nice. opportunities to be making and selling local food. I never thought of online. And we yeah. have farmers that are saying, my gosh, if I knew that people were looking to buy you know, certain products that I have, tomatoes or any kind of vegetable that I'd like to you know, offer, they're, they're talking to us about maybe we can grow extra food for some of those businesses that are looking at making local food. So it's a really nice circle effect of you know, supporting local food, local farms and producers, creating opportunities for residents who you know, are looking for something to do. And it can be residents of all sorts. It could be retired individuals who are, you know, wanting to start a small business. It could be moms that are at home. It could be somebody that wants to work at home because they have families and they're looking to be creative and love working with food. It could be gentlemen that stay at home and, and are foodies and love making food as well. So it's, it, this is an opportunity for everybody uh, in, in every age category, in every category in the city of Kingston and the region, South Frontenac and the area, that can be learning something new and maybe creating a business along the way that they weren't even aware of. Well, you could also uh, perfect your, re your recipe in your kitchen, in your home kitchen, get it nailed down with the exactly what ingredients went into it, and then start looking into, you've got this dynamite spaghetti sauce. That yes. <clears throat> something like that and then then you take it from there but you've already got your recipe already nailed down. You can so you're allowed to create recipes and do all of that um, intricate stuff and, and really play with what's in the ingredients in your home. Right. The minute you start looking at selling it you have to do it in a commercial kitchen yep. and so yes I absolutely so if you're already making you know grandma's favorite sauce or you know Aunt Betty's g crazy cookies for Christmas mm -hmm. you can have those recipes in place and then test them out as well in the marketplace right so start making them at a commercial kitchen uh, packaging them properly we have a business support office uh, internally at the city of Kingston where we'll help businesses navigate through our city services and introduce them to other support services like Kingston Economic Development and you know tourism Kingston and keys and all of our employment partners to really help support their business and help them actually create that business as well to see what that could look like because you know it is a little scary sometimes starting a business or or say you're home and you have this great recipe or you just love to cook all kinds of different sauces or make all kinds of different great baked goods but you don't know the next step and so we're here to help you in every regard with regards to what is that next step? What are the policies and regulations? How do we help you from a business standpoint? How do you find those customers? And you can make this opportunity as small or as big as you want. You don't have to be selling. At this point, this particular day, we're starting off small, so it's an introduction, intro level to the, uh, the opportunity to make and sell food. The goal is that this fall, we're, all sh we're gonna do the next level. So if you're in the level where you're already making and selling food to retailers and restaurants and maybe online, this fall we're looking at talking to the Sobeys and the Loblaws of the world and bringing them to, to oh, Kingston. What a and then idea. saying, hey, now you can be selling to the farm boys and the larger grocery chain. This is what that looks like. And so teaching people mm -hmm. what that next stage looks like as well. And would you get into contract manufacturers? Because most people could not turn out the volumes that you're going to need for even one of those That's stores. correct, right? So it's introduction to contact, contract manufacturers and suppliers and other organizations that are doing this as mm -hmm. partnerships with other organizations mm -hmm. that are doing this. Sometimes, you know, uh, we've worked with clients that they have this incredible recipe and they actually sell it to a very large company, oh, right? So there's so yeah, many different ways to think about this there are so many and I see hot sauces and all that there's so many on the market and yeah. sometimes I think with hot sauce it's all in the label <laughs> it, yeah. it's what's attractive about the label because people will buy it as a, a joke or something to and give how many to peppers somebody. are on it right which will <laughs> tell you the Colville scale <laughs> that's, that's right one. yes yeah, the yeah. One. what do restaurants tell you they're looking for well, and here's the challenge with restaurants, and, and I'm, I'm, I've been a, in the restaurant industry for many years, I'm not a restaurateur, so, but from the restaurants that we're talking to, the challenge that they're having is choice. So they don't even oh, have the okay. choice. So if they had opportunities to have other choices of local food that they, be, they could be buying, they would create new products and new menu items. 
Okay. That's a challenge. So, so instead of saying, what do you want? They say, what can you give me? Well, I think it's a combination of both. So okay. at this particular day, we actually have a panel that day of local re local restaurants and local oh. businesses that want to buy local food. So I'm moderating a panel that day, that training day on, on Friday, February 10th, where we're going to be talking to them about what do you want? What are you looking for? Yeah. What is it that the community can be doing to, in terms of making local food that will help make you grow and help introduce local food to our community? So we're really engaging that th those uh, uh, businesses as well and having them at the event to be talking to these potential entrepreneurs. It sounds wonderful. If people want more information about doing this, they know, you know, you've got some time now. You've got a few weeks, so start thinking about it. And then how can they get a hold of you? So they can get a hold of me um, at two ways. They can go to the City of Kingston website. I'm not sure right now where exactly it is on the City of Kingston website. But if they go to the City of Kingston website, and they, uh, they Google you know, food production, they will make sure that they can find it. The other pieces, they can just email me at tsnow at cityofkingston.ca. Sounds wonderful. It sounds like a wonderful day and a really great idea. Thank you so much for coming in. So pleased to be here. Thank you.